it's official. Melee sucks. You've said it in the comments. They said it on the dev blog. Here is the buzzsaw video. PvP clips first, build second. Hope you enjoy. I love the chase and the hunt and I set the pace when I'm running I always take what I want and I always give it 100 Don't need a bank, no I'm funded Play the game like it's nothing I'm always thankful for something Don't take for granted, stay humble Now wake up! It's time to look at the enemy Look in the mirror if he is no friend to me It's not working out, maybe it's the chemistry It's time to break up so I can make a better me Better believe in your mind cause it's everything You can mold shape Like to play fast, never change back 
not as tough The one who tested luck with me I think I'm bad enough to see I'm sick of all the bad thoughts People who are have nots Who are not as tough as me The one who tested luck with me I think I'm bad enough to see I'm sick of all the bad thoughts People who are have nots Who are not as tough as me So you saw the PvP clips, and I don't normally do that style of humor, but I just been keep hearing everybody say how much melee sucks, especially in OPR. And uh, I thought I would do a little bit of uh, you know maybe clickbaity esque type of title, um, but honestly, it's just because everybody keeps saying how bad melee is, and uh, you know, <laughs> it is it is fantastic, especially this build. This build has it all. All right, so what we're going to do here is first we're going to talk a little bit about the skill trees. We're going to talk about the gear, and then we're going to start talking about a little bit of everything else, including tips and tricks. All right, so first let's go to the skill tree, and we're going to talk about the great sword. This is a great sword, great axe build, like you saw in the PvP clips, and here is my tree. Now, this build is mainly focused on a little bit more single target damage, the great sword has natural AOE with its swing. So we're focusing more on single target. So we are taking the left side of the tree because I love unrelenting assault. It means you don't have to have refreshing move on your great sword. Is it still good? Of course it is, especially in war, but this passive is pretty crazy. So first we're using relentless rush. This is probably in my opinion, one of the best abilities for the great sword. It allows you to really do a couple things really easily and we'll talk about that in the gearing section but this ability i just absolutely love it it's probably my favorite and it's pretty good essentially you're just going to spin through people you can apply a slow it does a decent amount of damage we get empowerment from it and you can root people or you can heal yourself depending on what stance you are when you started it most of the time we're going to be in onslaught stance when we start it uh, sometimes we will be in Defiant Stance, so most of the time we are just getting the root. But it's a really good ability. I love it. The other ability we're using in the Onslaught Tree is Skyward Slash. This is a swing up in a Brutal Arc, staggering your target, dealing 80% weapon damage and applying two stacks of 5% rend for 10 seconds. Then we have the follow-up attack, deals 140% damage. This thing really chunks. 
damage by activating the skill again or using the light attack. We pretty much always use the light attack and we can basically turn it into a disease that is also an AOE, so really good. And then we're just taking a lot of the damage passives. Now, you know, some people are probably gonna wanna take Giant Slayer, but honestly, this really only affects a small part, you know? We are easily, with our very first attack, gonna get them below 90% health, so we don't really need it. And honestly, I can't see giving up any of these passives for it. Now, you can maybe say you don't want this passive, but you really don't want to stamina break yourself on this build, and I really think this is a very needed passive. So let's go ahead and talk Defiant Stance, and we're doing Steadfast Strike. Now, this ability does a couple different things. One is a great interrupt, and essentially you just stab forward, impale your foes, and then pull back and rip out the blade, restoring 20 stamina on hit. The first hit does 70% weapon damage, and the second hit does 120 weapon damage and they pull the enemy towards you. I love this ability. The one thing I love about it is it'll increase your all or decrease the cooldowns of your greatsword abilities by 20%. And then if the first hits you, if the first strike hits, you are healed for 50% of the weapon damage. Nice little sustain. And then if you're in defiant stance, which we're never going to be, so we're not going to worry about that as well because we, we're not going to be in defiant stance when we enter in or when we use this ability. So. The other passives here is if you are uh, hit while at full health, reduce damage taken by 20%, then gain 20% fortify for three seconds. Just an overall very, very great tanky passive. Of course, one of the best passives in the tree, Blade Honing. Base damage is increased by 3% for each greatsword buff on you. And then we're just going to get some grit with heavy attacks, which we already have, but they're going to apply bleeding. Honestly, this passive right here is more of a stat patty passive, and you can definitely take it out. You can take it out. If I was to take it out, I would either get Giant Slayer or Aggressive Shift. So either one of those is just fine. I'm not really too into the crit chance. And this one's not build bad, reducing ability cooldowns by 50% when you kill a foe, which is pretty good. But I would probably, if you want a little bit of damage, go Giant Slayer. If you want a, a little bit more control over going into Onslaught Stance, we would just take Aggressive Shift. Now you have very low cooldowns on this build. Because we have so much cooldown reduction with Steadfast Strike, with Unrelenting Onslaught, so your abilities are up quite often. Now, let's talk a little bit about stance switching, switching because that is kind of the big thing of this build. And essentially, what I like to do here is I always want to attack while I'm in Onslaught stance. So, if I want to get a big Steadfast Strike off, a lot of times what I will do is I'll do a dodge to proc my Empowerment right here and then i will do a relentless rush which procs another empowerment and now i have a steadfast strike and you can see there it does quite a bit of damage and the one thing to note about every single one of the abilities is it enters the stance after the ability ends so you can see here relentless rush enter onslaught stance when this ability ends same thing with every single one of these abilities so if you wanted to you know i, I hold on i think does this and there's signs when this ability ends. Yeah, so all of them, you will enter in the ability when the ability ends, or you'll enter in that stance when the ability ends. So what we're doing here is we're gonna manipulate that. Uh, you can use, you can get the big damage from Steadfast Strike by just going into Onslaught Stance, and now we can get Steadfast Strike, and we get the extra damage on it, and now we're super tanky. So keep that in mind when you're doing this build. Now, a great way to also swap off the stance, so we're in Onslaught Stance, now we're getting ready to take a bunch of damage. We can't get into Defiant Stance. We're just going to swap weapons. As soon as you swap weapons, you lose your stance, and you are back to hitting or taking normal damage. So just keep that in mind. We're going to talk a little bit more about that in the tips and tricks side, but uh, it's really good. So next, let's talk about the Great Axe Tree. This is pretty standard for me. I love Bloodlust. We're going for a lot more of a catch ability here. We want to be able to catch our targets. We have a lot of damage, especially with the Great Sword, and the Great Axe does a lot of damage as well. We are going down the full reap. I love the full reap. It's one of my favorite abilities in the game, especially with the fatal attraction on it. We're going one point into charge. We really don't need any of these other abilities. We're getting all the other passives here. If you want to not take uh, one of these passives, I can understand if you want to get frenzied momentum, but honestly, these passives are all really good. Then the Mauler side of the tree, we're taking gravity well. We're taking crowded well. And then we're not taking unyielding. Honestly, I don't like this ability at all. Because allies gain 10% fortify while standing in your gravity well. If it had a lingering, like, you know, a lingering effect, sort of like maybe sacred ground, maybe lingering fortify, I would like it. For your gravity well, it takes, what, a 
second and a half or something like that. Uh, roots them for one second. Uh, the vortex ends uh, ends after three seconds. You, they can only get three seconds of fortify, and that's if you land it right on your enemy or right on your ally. I really don't like that passive, but we're taking Mauler's Resolve, Enduring Strike, just very normal, and then your two, you know, basically if your enemies are three um, within three meters, you get damage reduction or some damage. Next, when it comes to attributes, I my food just did run out. Um, but we are running 300, 200, just a standard bruiser build. You have a ton of damage with this build, and the 300, 200 is going to be just fine. If you want to go a little bit more damage, or there's a specific great sword that's pretty good that you can, well, you'll hopefully be able to craft called Craftsman's uh, Passion. Can't currently craft it, but eventually you'll be able to. You can go 350 and then 150. But we are running medium armor, so whenever running, when I'm running medium armor, I really do want to get the 10% or this uh, 200 passive here. 10% increase to physical and elemental armor. Now, this used to be a little bit different. It used to be a lot more beneficial for medium armor. But uh, if I'm going to be a little tanky, I really just love this passive. It makes you so tanky. Next, let's talk about the gear. Now, I do have a pretty decent gear. I did craft this great sword day one. It was one of the first ones I crafted. Abyssal Attunement, Thordian Strikes, Keenly Jagged. Not bad. I would have rather either refreshing move or keenly empowered there that would be um my sort of bis refreshing move definitely for wars and then i like keenly empowered to get a little bit extra damage and then we are running of course the hook i love it starting strikes keenly empowered crippling reap one of my favorite named weapons in the game of course you can definitely get an increase on this the same basic bis as the great sword uh, what people consider to be the normal bis would be attunement thwarting Refreshing move, but honestly, if you get anywhere from Thwarting, Keenly Empowered, Refreshing Move, you get a combination of any of those, it'll be just an absolute crazy weapon you'll probably never craft again. Um, actually, let's swap back to my other ring before we go there. Oh, nope. Where is it at? I have it here somewhere. There it is. Okay. So, I guess we'll go to the we'll go to the jewelry section. So we have a refreshing ward, refreshing toast, nimble. We like a little bit of stamina regen. We love, you have to have refreshing toast in my opinion. And then we are stacking in a lot of refreshing ward. Refreshing ward is absolutely crazy on this build. And uh, I just got this amulet, but or earring. But honestly, until then, most of the clips, you're going to see I'm actually just running Doom's Chant, which is just really, really good as well. But uh, I do like the refreshing ward a little bit better. And then nimble is still really good because we do use a ton of stamina on this build. And then we are running a ring with invigorated punishment slash damage. Honestly, this is absolutely crazy good. You can run a mortal, to, mortal empowerment. I did craft this the other day, mortal empowerment slash damage hardy. You don't actually need hardy on this build. Again, extra stamina is not bad, but I would prefer leeching here probably. Um, or refreshing ward would be the two perks I'd rather have for a medium build. But... Uh, this ring is still pretty crazy. I ran this. You, you won't see any of the um, the clips that you, you saw there, not with this. I did run this. I did get the max stacks and pretty crazy. My uh, ultimate was hitting for like 12,000, um, but really, really good. Uh, so I crafted a bunch of these. I was trying to get a Lego. I never ended up getting a Lego, but slash damage invigorated punishment to me is what I consider to be bis. And then just leeching, refreshing ward are probably the two. And then what I consider to be the best amulet here is Divine Health Shirking Empowerment. This is really good. I bought this recently for 100k. Now, I don't think I have... Oh, I do. So, this is a really good amulet you can also run. And this comes out of the Tempest box. I've ran this amulet. I don't know. I ran this for the longest time. This is what I believe I was running. Or the Champion's Amulet, which is right here. Either one of these are very good. Stamina Recovery, Health, Shirking Empowerment. Fantastic. And then this one as well. If you don't have the champion's amulet, just get this. Stamina recovery, fortified health. Very, very tanky amulet. But uh, I would strive to get divine health, shirking empowerment, especially if you typically run with the healer. Now for our gear, we're running Raider's Hat. We are in medium armor. We do have two named items on here. And uh, it's the Raider's Hat and the regular pants. Both these are very, very good. Now I do only have one piece of freedom here. I would prefer um, freedom right here with my resilient would be what I would be hoping for. But um, yeah, you'd also prefer refreshing ward as much as possible. But if you can't get refreshing ward, then refreshing is just good. 
So then we have our chest piece refreshing ward, insatiable grab vault, resilient. The two, or the, basically the two biggest perks you want is going to be insatiable grab well and crippling reap, followed by um, relentless rush. Now, the relentless rush, I used it. I actually have a heavy gauntlet right here with it on it. It didn't roll resilient. I was trying to craft it with scarabs. Um, but it's pretty good, but it's honestly not needed. It is something that I would strive to have. So if that rolled um, resilient, shirking fort, and then relentless rush would probably be what I consider abyss here for sure. Um, other than that, you don't really need any weapon perks. And then my boots, I got these um, from the actual PvP reward track. They're pretty crazy. Resilient, refreshing ward, and a shirking fortification. So I do have some pretty good gear here. We are running uh, some pretty crazy good stuff, but these regular pants are really insane. If you don't know where to get these, these are new in Brimstone. And you can get them by farming the boss in the daytime. Where is it at? Right here. There's a panther that spawns at nighttime. He spawns up north, but I wouldn't even worry about that. But uh, yeah, these pants are pretty crazy. Resilient, refreshing, shirking fortification. But we are stacking resilient on every piece. We're going shirking fortification as much as possible. Then we're getting our insatiable grab well. We're getting crippling reap. And then we're getting relentless rush if possible. Uh, so if I could get it, I'd probably just exchange this hat and put it on there. Because this is a little bit better than probably the raider's hat. But uh, we don't really need that much freedom. The freedom is nice, but we really don't need it. And then for our heart rune gem, we are running the brutal heart rune of detonate. You probably could have guessed because we got some pretty crazy PvP clips of me just absolutely exploding people. Even the triple kill there at the end was pretty nuts. Now you can run pretty much whatever rune you have here, but I really, really, really suggest the brutal heart rune gem because it is crazy, the Brutal Heart Rune of Detonate. Now, let's go ahead and charge it up while we're talking here, because you'll see me do this, and the reason why I love Greatsword so much is because it is so easy to actually proc your Heart Rune gems and get a lot of damage out of them. Now, it's not the fastest at charging them, just because you don't really have quite the dots of some other builds that can really charge them fast. But the big thing about your heart room gems are they really scale very well with empowerment. And the great sword has great ways to basically scale damage. So you want to basically scale very generic damage. Let's go over to the great sword. I made a video about this, but the reason why I love relentless rush so much is because we have the empowerment. So what you can do with your heart room gem, and if you see the triple kill I got with the heart room gem in one of the last PvP clips. It's because we did a couple things. First, we dodge, giving us 10% in power. Then we relentless rush, which not only put us in onslaught mode, which means we deal 15% more damage, but we also get another 10% damage to empower. So then we have 10, 20, 35% increased damage, which increases our heart rune damage. And then we have keen, exp or keen posture here. After gaining onslaught, stance your next attack within five seconds has a 100% increased critical chance. So you can guarantee a crit. So we're guaranteeing a crit and adding 35% extra damage to our heart rune gem. And that is if we don't have any source of empowerment or anything like that at all. Now you can take this. If they're at 100% health, then your base damage would be increased by another 20% if they're at full life. Uh, so it's pretty crazy. So it's pretty easy here. We'll just show you. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dodge, do my relentless rush. I'm gonna get a guaranteed crit. Oh, uh, let's see if it works. We might run out of a little bit of burn power. Oh, <laughs> it, it kind of just ate. But you can see it in the PvP clips that it's really easy. All you gotta do is dodge, do relentless rush, and the thing absolutely goes off. It's actually been bugging out a little bit lately. The last OPR I did, it uh, didn't seem to be doing a lot. So there's a there's a bug going on with it right now. But if you don't want to run that, if you want to run something that's a little bit more self-sustaining, we don't have it on us. Oh, yeah, we do. Um, we, don't, we haven't leveled it up, but Dark Ascent is a pretty decent self-sustaining one. It doesn't do the most damage, but it definitely um, has a little bit more self-sustain. Other than that, I really don't suggest anything. You can run something like Stone Form, but honestly, I don't think Stone Form is that great for this build. can give you some extra tankiness. But we really, we really can be very tanky with this build. So detonate can really give you the ability to kill some of those pesky healers that won't allow you to kill them. 
And uh, you saw some of those pretty crazy clips of this gem. It is absolutely crazy. So we've already started on a little bit of the tips with the stance swapping. Um, but essentially, the easiest way to get some pretty free kills is I always try to start off with the gravity well. And then I just do a relentless rush into a heavy attack. And I'll do our uh, skyward swipe or whatever it's called. And then what I do here is I try to save my steadfast strike here for when I use it as essentially an interrupt. Now, I like to have the ability whenever I do my steadfast strike to get back into onslaught form as fast as possible. So let's say we do our normal like this. Oh, they're going to get away. We're going to steadfast strike. And now I'm in uh, defiant stance, but we're just going to go ahead and hit our um, skyward slash to get us right back into onslaught. When you're there, you're just heavy attacking. You're heavy attacking as much as possible. See, we use a lot of stamina because it uses up our stamina when we heavy attack, when we are in our um, onslaught mode or onslaught stance. So you really want to have the ability to get a lot of stamina back. And that's what this build does really well. And that's why I kind of like the nimble. Now, it's not a huge difference, but it does just at least a little bit of extra stamina regen is never going to hurt. So the big thing about this build is stance switching. You're going to be switching back and forth. Now, if you want to run a little bit of a tankier build, and I tried this out as well, we go Relentless Rush into Steadfast Strike into Roaring Rupture. Now, I still did take Unrelenting Assault, which means you have to take, I believe, every passive over here, almost every passive over here. Um, I do like Roaring Rupture. I think Roaring Rupture is an absolutely fantastic ability. I do like this one where it shockwave pushes enemies outwards in Defiant Stance, which we're never going to use it then. We have Onslaught Stance. It pulls them in. What you can do if you want to stack two Defiance abilities is... You can use the Aggressive Shift to shift back and forth. So you can go into Steadfast Strike, Heavy Attack, get into Onslaught Mode, then do Roaring Rupture, and then Heavy Attack, and get back into Onslaught Mode, and it gives you a lot of switching potential. I think it's a little bit higher skill gap you can do with this, and you can do a ton of damage. Like, Roaring Rupture itself does 120% damage, which is pretty crazy. You re remove two um, debuffs, and then you can pull people in. It's crazy. We have a, I think I'm going to put it in the PvP clips, of uh, me just going in and getting a triple kill with Roaring Rupture um, open world. We were severely outnumbered. It was like 2v15 or something like that. You get like six kills. But uh, Roaring Rupture, especially when you're doing it from Onslaught Stance, because it'll deal the damage, then instantly put us into Defiant Stance is pretty crazy. The reason why this Greatsword is so good is because you really have a lot of different ways you can play it. And being able to swap stances basically on command you can always deal extra damage when you're trying to deal damage, and then you can be tanky whenever you are getting pressured. So it's the reason why I love the Greatsword so much. But all right, guys, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. We tried to make the build part pretty quick, pretty precise. Uh, we just wanted to get a bunch of PvP clips out there for you. Let me know how you like this format. I'm sure a lot of you will be uh, very upset of how I started off the video. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Like, comment, subscribe. Like always, we have some more stuff coming up here in the near future. All right, guys. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Peace.